Hi, and thank you for listening to the different uh, videos that I have on my channel. I hope that you like it and will subscribe. I'm here today to talk about the election. My fellow Christians, my fellow Christian Americans, I'm creating this video as I am moved by the Spirit to do so. I want to talk about the presidential race. A few months ago, I would have told you we have to choose between bad and worse, with little means to tell the difference. Personally, I don't like Donald Trump, not because of his politics, but he has shown himself to be godless in his approach to life and in the business of running America. I originally supported Ted Cruz, who at least acknowledged God and Jesus. And he was not afraid to speak of his faith in his campaign. Well, he is out of the picture now. We are all left with a choice between Hillary and Donald. As a Christian, that is a call to discernment which is very pressing. In terms of the candidate which represents Christian values, we have to think about it and see which candidate represents best our Christian values. Without a doubt, Mr. Trump desperately represents those values, and I'll tell you why. He is not pro-life, but at least he has some strong convictions about criterion for abortions. So he is the lesser of two evils in that regard. Mr. Trump is also committed to building borders for our country, carefully screening the immigration process, where Hillary will allow anyone in indiscriminately. That's her policy. Mr. Trump is also committed to abolishing Obamacare, which we know now was passed without approval and presented to Americans by the fairy tales of Barack Hussein Obama. Obamacare is not just bad for America. It is like planting a flag of communism into our capitalist economy. Mr. Trump is a free speech advocate and a right to go arms advocate, the right to bear arms. You can tell he believes in free speech because his lack of control over his words is what has hurt him the most in this election. We know that he's highly favored by the gun lobbyists and has, is, is in favor of everyone's right to bear arms. Personally, I hate guns, but the agenda of the New World Order is to take the guns out of the hands of the citizens. So in that regard, I do stand for the right for everyone to bear arms, if that is their choice. Additionally, as Christians, we must discern who's more likely to move us away from the one world government that is evolving, even as I speak. It's one, it's one. one world government proponents want to end all borders and end sovereignty of individual nations, and we know Mr. Trump is for building borders and redefining America as separate, strong, and independent. We, this also puts us in the best position to go to the aid of Israel when they need us, without letting the UN decide what kind of fate happens to Israel. We can't leave that in the hands of the UN. Next there is the war on terror, which is really World War III, which no one wants to admit. Trump has identified our enemies. They are the Muslims. We do not declare, we do not declare war on them, but they declare war on us by their evil doctrine in the Quran. How can you defeat an enemy if you don't define who they are? And Obama has not done that. He's not defined them. He's just defined them generally as terrorists. But we know that is the Muslim fundamentalism that says that all of the infidels must be destroyed. Mr. Trump is committed to identifying the enemy, which is Muslims, and destroying them. You know, anyone who presents a danger to us. Finally, and most importantly, communism will be the agenda of the one world government. Obama has pushed us into being a semi-communist state already, with national health care as the flagship agenda for his communist agenda. 
The free market capitalist economy has many flaws, but it doesn't seek to redistribute wealth according to some communist agenda which is arbitrary. It is, us, it is up to us Christians to be there for those that are needy and the ones that are marginalized, the poor and the homeless. It's not the, it's not the responsibility of the government. It's our responsibility as Christians to do this work. And it's, that's how Jesus put it, and that's how Jesus defined Christianity. And it is our place to do his commands at this late stage of our age. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope you vote for Donald Trump.